It's the Patrick Netherton Show right here on 1130, The Tiger. He's Rogers Hampton. I'm Patrick Netherton, and we're very, very pleased to welcome in Spring Hill's own, now a member of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, Going to be an interesting rookie year for my man. Devin White joins us. Devin, how are you, man? I'm doing great. I couldn't be doing much better than what I'm doing today. Hey, well, the good news is you're actually – uh, you, you, I guess you're off now, right? You, you got through the the rookie uh, camp and uh, everything. You get some, uh, you get some time to where you're not doing organized activities. I mean, you're still working out, right? But yeah, but, I'm still hitting it hard. I got one at six a.m. in the morning. I'm ready for it. I'm ready to go in. Me and the rookies, you know, we've been putting in a lot of great work, kind of trying to set the tempo for you know the season. You know, it all starts in the off season, so I can't complain. I'm thankful that I can wake up every morning and do what I love doing. All right, before we get into the football side of things, I got to ask, right? You, you, you're the fifth overall pick. Your world's changed. You know, you got, you, you, you're, you, you're set. You're good. Everything's awesome. You're getting ready to go and do, you know, live your dream. But the, the first question I want to know is, what's going to happen to Daisy May? Are you, are you, uh, is, she, is she going to Tampa? Is she staying? What's, what's happening? I, this is what I need to know most. Oh, uh, yeah, well. Most definitely, I wouldn't let anyone uh, take care of my kids. You know, there's not too many people in the world. Maybe, you know, one of my good friends, Adam Hawthorne, he could maybe keep her in Winsboro, but, you know, she got to hit the road with her daddy, man. <laughs> when I go back for training camp, she got to hit the road with her dad. So do you do you have a – I mean, are you, did you buy – do you buy a place with a stable? Do you build one on a play? I mean, how do you – where do you – where do you? I mean, you're not going to – you're not going to put her up in a condo. So, where you know, how, no. tell, me, tell me about putting her up. Uh, so it's just going to be the same thing like it was at LSU. You know, I had a great boarding facility at Far Park in, in Baton Rouge. And, you know, I found a great boarding facility out here named Avalon. You know, it's a great staff. And, you know, they got a really nice uh, boarding facility. And I'm going to use those those guys. And, you know, they're going to do a great job. And hopefully they love them as much as I love and take just as good as care as I do with my horse when I'm not around, you know, when I'm at uh, practice and, and things and on the road for games. But it'll be real nice and interesting. So, are you going to ride her into Raymond James Stadium like you did at uh, Tiger Stadium? Yeah, I know I was I was pretty much loved in LSU, and I loved them back for it. But you know that was a great of an opportunity. It's still the best moment of my life besides getting drafted this year. I think that top riding that horse in uh, Tiger Stadium, but uh, that was number two. And if I and if I think if they let me do it, it'll be tied for number two. Oh, that's beautiful. Talking to Devin White. Uh, all right, Devin, what, you get drafted by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and there are a lot of Louisiana natives who are LSU fans but also New Orleans Saints fans, and I know this is not a, not a new question for you. My producer is one of those guys. He's you know, been following your career, since Nor- as we all have, since North Webster, LSU, and he's dreading the fact that the Buccaneers are going to call your name at number five, and they do. How do you have you have you had some mixed reception from some of your friends and family that hey I don't you know I I still love you but I don't want you to see you win when you play the Saints. Yeah, I mean a lot of people like a, a lot of diehard Saints fans they uh say you know they hope I do good when we play the Saints but they hope I lose but like my true family and everybody that was a Saints fan or a Cowboy fan you know being in the three one eight you kind of can be mutual mm-hmm. they they completely switched over and they became Bucks fans so. You know, the people who are really there for me, you know, it don't matter what team and what division I am. If they was liking another team, like my stepdad, you know, he's been a uh, uh, Indianapolis Colts fan for all his life. And, you know, we had to take the sign down in the yard, you know, once I got drafted. And that just to show you how much love that I get from my family members. And I love them back. You know, my grandma was a diehard Saints fan. And now she wants all bug stuff. You know, I like to play the hard car, say, you know, basically like a house divided, you know. Uh, yeah. I'm a Saints fan on Sundays and an LSU fan on Saturdays. And now she got to take that down because she's no longer a Saints fan because her grandson plays for the Tampa Bay Bucks, and that's just how that works. So that's why I love my family so much, and I put them before anyone else. There's nothing like true love that says, yeah, if you'll give up your Saints fandom or your Colts fandom or whatever because you're because your your relative is out there playing for the Bucks, that is true love, Devin. There's no doubt about that. You don't have to doubt the love that those folks are giving you. Um, uh, talking to Devin White from the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. All right, let's talk about uh, kind of what what you went in, the expectations that you had going into you know your first off season activities. How how yeah. is it? How, was it the same? Different? Were you prepared? Did anything catch you by surprise going into that? 
No, nah, going going in, you know, I feel like everything. I'm not gonna say it's the same because I'm dealing with you know real men, like mm-hmm. real men that's going home to like families and wives and stuff. I say that's about the only difference. But at the end of the day, you know, you step out there between those white lines. That's what I've been doing for many, many years. You know, I've been playing football for a long time. And I say the biggest thing was just my approach to the game. You know, I had to come with a different approach. I couldn't have a college approach. Uh, obviously, because I'm not in college, you know, I'm doing things at a bigger level. You know, I'm doing uh, – I'm, I'm actually huddling up on defense. I never huddled up on defense in my life. Yeah. So everything is just different in its own ways. But, you know, the greatest thing about me, the great one of the greatest attri- attributes about myself is being able to learn on the fly and conduct myself in any fashion. And I'm so happy that that's one of my traits because I'm in a new environment and I got to be able to keep up with the pace and really not let alone keep up with the pace but lead the pace. So I'm, 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 I'm happy about it. You know, one of the things that I don't know that people understand is in college, especially at the level you're at, you know, there's a, a GA or someone that's assigned, hey, make sure everyone's going to class, make sure they're hitting their books, make sure they're hitting study hall. You know, they're, they're checking up on you. They're making sure that you're where you're supposed to be. But now you, you're responsible for yourself. No one's going to call you and get your butt out of bed if you're oversleeping. Uh, tell me about having to kind of take some some personal responsibility, or is that something that you've been doing since you were at LSU? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, uh, man, I've always been a guy that's been very mature for my age, and I was that guy at LSU. You might as well should have called me a GA because I was I was holding my guys to a higher standard. You know, I was showing them, like, hey, if we got an appointment, we need to be there on time unless something really, really happens. So if you, you can go ask Coach O, Coach uh, – you know, Miss um, Pam, anybody that deals with the defense, you can they can uh, vouch. Coach Aranda, that no linebackers were ever on the list and had to do no punishment work for being late or something like that because, you know, I held those guys to a higher standard. And, they, and in order to do that, I had to show them, like, hey, I'm doing it, you know, so why can't I do it? So, you know, um, no, nah, I don't have to worry about nobody getting me up because if we got practice at 6, I need to get there at like 5.15 so I can get my body ready and go through my routine, my daily routine before practice, you know, so I'm going to be ready. That's beautiful. Devin White uh, joining us. Uh, Devin, you mentioned Dave Aranda. You you go from, I think, arguably the best defensive mind in college uh, football to one of the best defensive minds in the NFL in Todd Bowles. Tell me about working with Coach Bowles and, and kind of what his vision for you is. Uh, working with Coach Bowles has been great. You know, he's a very hands-on coach. He's just like Dave around in a lot of areas. He likes to play man, and he likes to uh, pressure quarterbacks from many different ways. And as everybody knows, you know, Coach Aranda used me a lot in many different ways. He let me cover people. He let me uh, licks. He let me, you know, just do everything, run and hit, and, you know, play downhill. And, you know, Coach Bowles is the same way. And, you know, the thing that I like uh, most about him is, like, now that we're in the pros, like, you know, this is what you're getting paid for, and you got to be able to pick up on the concept. Whether in college, if a guy couldn't get a concept or a couple of players couldn't get a concept, you didn't really have that much time to work them, or you really come pressure them to get it, you know, because this is what we recruited, and we got you. It ain't no we can replace you and go get a guy that fit this scheme all the way. You know, so I think it's a little different in that nature, but, you know, he's a great coach, and I love what he do, and I love what he believes in as far as his defense philosophy. You know that I, you know that I got wrote down in my book. You know, well, I got a whole package of package of, and I'm just thankful that you know I get to play for such a man of you know his integrity. Talking to Devin White from uh, Tampa Bay. All right, Devin, you get uh, you get you get Alvin Kamara and Christian McCaffrey twice a year. Are you ready for this, brother? Because this that's not easy right there. That's not easy sledding. No, no, it, it's not easy. And I'm uh, and that was one of the reasons that I was so happy to come to this division because. You know, I get to go against two of the greatest, you know, backs in the league right now. And they're, and they're not just down here running. They, you know, they're some great uh, athletic people. And, you know, I just get to show my athletic uh, ability and get out and cover those guys and, you know, play those guys in the run and just show everybody what I'm all about and, you know, how good of a linebacker that I'm striving to be. So I'm, I'm extremely happy and I'm extremely looking forward to the challenge. All right, you mentioned Todd Bowles wants to pressure the quarterback play man. That means you're going to be getting into the backfield a little bit. Who's the number one quarterback you want to take down? Uh, the number one quarterback that I like to take down is all of them. You know, I look <laughs> to have at least one sack a game, you know, because, I mean, I just want to just do whatever I can do to help my team. And I feel like if I can get a sack every game on each quarterback that we face, I feel like that I'm helping my team uh, 
win the game in a, in a phase of the game. And, you know, sacks are big because sacks can lead into turnovers a lot of times. So uh, I want to touch every quarterback. I want to at least press them if I don't get the sack. All right, so let me change that up a little bit. What Very much right now, very vogue in the NFL. Guys are trading jerseys after the game. Who's the first jersey uh, you want? The first jersey I want? Come on, we I don't uh, – who our first game against? Our first game is against the Pittsburgh Steelers, so I got to get my brother Devin Bush jersey. You know, me and him made history, you know, by being, you know, two uh, undersized, as some people call us, linebackers that go uh, in the top ten. And, you know, we kind of changed the narrative and we ready to prove that, you know, we worth the pick. I, so I want to get his jersey. You know, we play the Cleveland Browns. It's going to be hard, but, you know, my lifelong brother, Greedy Williams, got to get his jersey. And, you know, every time we play a team, it's, it's always a NFL – LSU player on the team, so I'm going to be getting a lot of NFL LSU players very, you know, I'm going to keep it in the brotherhood, you know. No, I, I totally understand that, as you should. All right, final thing, Devin, uh, and thank you so much for your time today. Uh, you get to be the guest speaker at the Independence Bowl kickoff dinner on July 11th. Tell me about, uh, about you know, kind of how that happened and, and how excited are you to be able to come back to Shreveport and chat with folks? Yeah, so, you know, last year, you know, I was the camp, uh, I was like the camp volunteer person. And, you know, uh, they told me what the numbers had been. And, you know, the turnout that I had last year with the uh, kids at the camp, it was overwhelming because it was a lot of kids came from many different areas, you know, just to come hang out and work, uh, do football stuff with myself. And that was, you know, such a humbling experience. So when I got the opportunity to speak, you know, it was like, hey, this this is a shot. This is a time for you to stay connected with, you know, the people who you love the most. And that's my Louisiana people. So I was all I was all for you know anything they want to ask me or me just to get to interact with people who I never met before that's probably been watching me for a long time. I'm all for you know anything for the state of Louisiana. You know I'm always gonna be true to uh, my home, my home state because I mean I mean that's home. You know and I never you know forget where I'm, where I come from. So anything that I can do to stick around, I'm willing to do it. You and Greedy have to rep the three one eight now for us. You gotta gotta go out there and make that happen, sir. Oh, look yes, at Ron. sir. Yeah. Hey, uh, Devin, I'll be uh, I'll be emceeing that event, so I'm looking forward to uh, to chatting with you a little bit, catching up with you, man. Thank you so much for your time today. All right, thank you, Ben. All right. Nothing wrong with that, Devin White, linebacker for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers.